How many times have you been caught in an argument where you realized what you said was wrong or not 100% true? All of a sudden, you have that deep, twisted, unpleasant feeling and you start to sweat a little. All you can think about is your mistake and how you just want the conversation to end. Well, luckily for you, you're not the only one who has felt this. Unfortunately, nothing sucks more than when you're in the middle of a conversation and you are in an argument and you realize that you are in the wrong. What doesn't help is that this unpleasant twisted feeling is a natural reaction and there's really no way to make it better so from time to time when we do make mistakes we will experience this and we'll just have to deal with it today i will explain what this feeling is and what the actual term is that defines these feelings. And then I will talk about some of the components that make you feel the way you do. When mistakes are made and we realize that we made them, you will often know instantly, if not within a few seconds, because of that feeling. A social psychiatrist named Leon Festinger created the word for this exact term, which is cognitive dissonance. When defining this term, he said that it is a state of tension that occurs when a person holds two cognitive cognitions, ideas, attitudes, beliefs, opinions that are psychologically inconsistent. He then continued to say that dissonance produces mental discomfort, ranging from minor pangs to deep anguish. People don't rest easy until they find a way to reduce it. Carol Travis, oh sorry, Carl Travis, a co-author of the book, Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me, built on Festinger's idea and said that cognitive dissonance is what we feel when the self-concept, I'm smart, I'm kind, I'm convinced this belief is true, is threatened by evidence that we did something that wasn't smart, that we did something that hurt another person, or that this belief isn't true. Now that we know what this horrible feeling is called when we're wrong, someone might ask, what are the components of cognitive dissonance that is so uncomfortable? One of these components is simply not liking to be wrong. As humans, we are extremely competitive and we naturally just like to be right because it positively affects our identity, who we are, which can then lead to gaining the respect from others. Since we were babies and little kids, through our upbringing, we were taught what was right and what was wrong. We quickly learned that when we do something wrong, there is often some type of consequence that comes with it. Whereas if we do something right, we get praised and rewarded. <clears throat> Tina Hallis, the founder of Positive Edge, said that our brains were wired to perceive a reward response and feel good. But if we experience uncertainty, such as realizing we're wrong, we have a similar threat response as if someone were trying to harm us. So it's natural to feel highly defensive. And this explains why we often do get upset when we realize we are wrong and that what we said wasn't correct. Another component that adds to our pain is not liking to show our vulnerability. Paul Milan, an online blogger said, 
What the world needs, they say, is people who are willing to offer our best. Even though we might be wrong, even though our best might not be good enough, even though our best might not be noticed at all. Something that I've noticed is that it's really hard for people to put themselves out there. And it's really hard for them to show their vulnerable side, which makes it even harder to admit that you're wrong. Because if you can't be vulnerable, then it's pretty hard to admit that you've done something wrong. Dr. Tim Sharp, Chief Happiness Officer at the Happiness Institute says that for non-apologists, the irrational need to always be perfect rules their ego and they feel their screw-ups are unforgivable. He then continues to say, the difficulty in admitting failure largely comes from the unrealistic ex unrealistic expectation that I should get it right all the time. When we have these unrealistic expectations, we don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable. We're often the hardest on ourselves, and this can lead to built-up tension within us, and it'll just build up and build up and build up the more that we tend to push aside our wrongdoings and don't acknowledge what we've done. Another strong point that Dr. Sharp brought up was how if someone does admit being wrong, they begin to feel less strong, as if they lost their power. A study by European Journal of Social Psychology agreed with this point and said apology refusal also results in increased feelings of power, control, and value integrity, both of which mediated the effect of refusal on self-esteem. It's hard not to let power and control, sorry, it's hard not to let our power and control get a hold of our self-esteem. When we allow it to, this is when we experience the unpleasant feeling. Ultimately, because of our competitiveness, our upbringing and lack of vulnerability, we do experience different ranges of cognitive dissonance when we least likely want to expect, least likely want to experience it and go through the internal and psychological consequences. So, next time you realize that you are wrong, try to accept it and know that it'll suck for a little bit knowing that you were wrong, but you will get over it.